if you think the financial crisis was bad, then consider this. People like me believe the energy industry is making the same mistakes, essentially, as the financial services industry did in the run-up to the financial crisis, that there's a global energy crisis coming in a few years, and it will be even worse than the financial crisis was. It will happen on our watch. We'll have to deal with it within the next few years, if we're right. Part of the problem that we have with big industries is that they tend to hype their products and processes when they're in an incumbency. So just as the investment banks hyped mortgage-backed securities and derivatives thereof, so we think the oil and gas industry is actually hyping its ability to deliver affordably the quantities of oil that it will need to deliver to meet rising global demand. We doubt that narrative. We doubt also the narrative that the shale boom in America is something that is A, sustainable in America, and be exportable to the rest of the world. And so we think these problems are going to meet within the next few years uh, and create a global energy crisis, which will force us in a time of very tough circumstances to make hard choices. And out of that, we can fail and head down a road to ruin, or we can make the right choices, work together in extremis, and get onto a road to renaissance. And that's the upside part of my book. I argue that is possible. The building blocks are in place, but we have to make the right choices, and we will have to do so under enormous amount of pressure in society. What kind of time schedule are you thinking of that these things will happen? Well, if you, if you look at how fast conventional crude oil fields are depleting around the world, they're depleting 4 million barrels a day, and yet all we hear about is this hype about how America has fracked its way to shale gas riches that are going to turn America into Saudi America. Uh, in actual fact, that's only 2 million barrels a day. And there are many other pressures on these oil companies. The fact that Shell has just had to give up working in the Arctic in 2014 because its investors think it can't afford to do so. Many other oil companies are suffering those kinds of pressures. So with, with, with this kind of tightness in the global oil market, uh, people like me believe it's only going to be a couple of years before this crisis erupts. We hope we're wrong. It may be a little bit later than that. But the core issue is that we have an energy incumbency, a global energy incumbency, that's telling us there's nothing to worry about. They can keep producing rising amounts of oil off into the future, decades into the future. This is the narrative we doubt. This is the narrative that we think is as flawed as the one we heard from the financial services industry when they told us complex derivatives of mortgage-backed securities were a route to new riches. They weren't. They were a route to potential global ruin, and we were very lucky the governments managed to head off the worst of that crisis. And they'll be even more stressed with the global energy crisis that people like me think is coming. You speak about a renaissance, how can we get there? I think if you look around the world at how fast clean energy is rising, then in Germany, 25% of electricity coming from renewables. Uh, you look at the fact that that is owned by communities and individuals. You look at the way this is all being financed with retail bonds, with green bonds, growing amounts of money coming out of the traditional financial system into the new financial system. This is the kind of thing we have to work with. These are the grains of hope that we have uh, when we talk about a road to renaissance. <laughs>